Hello, thank you for joining us today and welcome to our Sunday School Lesson Study. Let us begin with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you, Father, for watching over us throughout last night and for keeping us safe, Father, and getting us up this morning and giving us a heart and a mind to praise and to glorify you. We thank you, Father, for this church, the Greater Shallow Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you, Father, for our leaders and for this congregation at large. Our prayer, Father, is that we would be the kind of church that you have called us to be, and that is a Christ-centered church where others would come to know you through your darling son, Jesus Christ. We pray now, Father, that you would help us to set aside any cares and concerns that we might have, and that we might look deeply and intently into your word, and that we may find practical applications for our daily lives. We thank you, Father, for this community, for this neighborhood, for the city, for the county, for this state, and for this nation in which we live. We pray, Father, that you would bless those that you have placed in position of leadership. Help them to know, Father, and to be encouraged, Father, that you are still in charge and that you are the King of kings and that you are the Lord of lords. We pray, Father, for those that are sick, for those that are afflicted, for those that are suffering from the loss of some loved ones, for those that are dealing with the recent uh, effects of the storm that we just had, we pray, Father, for those that are, uh, are throughout our nation, Father, that are downtrodden and just feel like they just don't have anywhere to turn. Bless them, Father. Keep them safe in your care. Have them know, Father, that you promised in your word that you would never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. We thank you, Father, most of all for your darling son, Jesus. It's because of his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And through our faith in him, Father, we too can have life and we can have it more abundantly. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Again, thank you for joining us today as we begin a new quarterly study. Today we begin the study for the fall of 2021. And our quarterly topic is entitled, celebrating God. Our first unit in this quarter will be unit one, and the topic is entitled, God's People Offer Praise. And so we look at our first lesson for unit one, which is the September 5th, 2021 lesson, and it's entitled, Praise with Music. As we look in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 11 through 21 of the New International Version of the Bible. And so we have two outlines for lesson one study. Our first outline is song part one from Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 19. Our second outline is song part two from Exodus chapter 15, verses 20 and 21. And so let's look at our scripture for today, which is also on the screen. And our scripture is entitled, The Song of Moses and Miriam, from Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 21 of the New International Version of the Bible. And let's read it together. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. You stretch out your right hand, and the earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will follow, fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone until your people pass by, Lord. 
until the people you brought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. And so our lesson context for lesson one, the September 5th, 2021 lesson is also on the screen. And our lesson one is entitled Praise with Music as we look at Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 21. So let's read our context for today, which is also on the screen. And it reads as follows. Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. Though freed from bondage, they found themselves trapped between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea. The Israelites seemed doomed except for the fact that God was with them. Today's lesson about a song teaches us important things about God, even some 3,500 years later. Long before the exodus of 1447 BC, God had promised Canaan, the promised land, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. Chapter 26, verse 3, and chapter 28, verse 13. The fulfillment of the promise seemed to be in jeopardy when Jacob and his family moved to Egypt because of a famine in Canaan. Still, God worked through Joseph, a son of Jacob, so that the family could have all it needed during the years of famine in Genesis chapter 41, verses 53 through 54. Over the centuries, the Israelites witnessed significant leadership changes in Egypt, from native Egyptians to foreign intruders, and then back to the Egyptians again. These intruders are sometimes called hyksos, or shepherd kings, but the word more likely just means foreigners who rule Egypt. This caused the Egyptians to develop an even greater dislike for shepherds from Genesis chapter 46, verse 34, something that became very significant in the history of the emerging nation of Israel. Finally, there came a new king to whom Joseph's reputation meant nothing in Exodus chapter 1, verse 18. The original favor, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and his son's experience changed into servitude and oppression. Measures were taken to subdue the people and slow their pop population growth. After the Israelites spent 430 years in Egypt, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 40 through 41, God was ready to act to fulfill his promises. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, through 25. It was during this time that Moses was born. It is well known that Moses was adopted by a princess of Egypt, but Moses had to flee Egypt at age 40 after killing an Egyptian. In Exodus chapter 2 verses 11 through 23 and Acts chapter 7 verse 23. Forty years later, Moses encountered the Lord at Sinai. God called Moses to leave his enslaved people away from Egypt, and the promise was repeated again in Exodus chapter 3, verse 38, I mean verse 8. God worked through Moses 
and Aaron, Moses' brother, to bring about nine plagues that devastated Egypt. The 10th plague took the lives of all the firstborn except among the Israelites. At that point, Pharaoh expelled the Israelites from Egypt in Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 through 33. It had been 430 years to the day since Jacob and his family entered Egypt in Exodus chapter 12, verses 40 through 41. As God's people left Egypt, they were reminded again that their destination was Canaan in Exodus chapter 13, verse 5 and verse 11. Pharaoh, however, changed his mind and decided to bring his enslaved Israelites back in Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 through 8. The Egyptians pursued Israel to the edge of the Red Sea. It seemed that the Israelites were blocked by the sea and victory for the Egyptians was assured. God had other plans. The Israelites crossed the Red Sea safely after God parted the waters but the Egyptians drowned when they tried to follow. The God of Israel was superior to any of the fictitious gods of Pharaoh. The crossing of the Red Sea was pivotal in the history of ancient Israel. The slaves were free beyond reach of Pharaoh. Moses and the people responded by bursting forth with joyous singing in Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 through 21. The printed text for this lesson concerns their song. The first song in the history of this new nation is a song of rejoicing because of the victory that the Lord had obtained for the people. The song is sometimes called a song of Moses and Miriam in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20 and 21 or a song of Moses and Israel in Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. A song of Moses already exists in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 30, introduces chapter 32 as the song of Moses. And so we look at our study for today, which is the song part 1, from Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 19. And let's read verse 11. And it, it starts with a song of Moses and Miriam. As we look at God's preeminence in verse 11, which is on the screen. And let's read that together. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. And so we see that verse 11 points to the uniqueness of God. The Egyptians had hundreds of gods as well as goddesses. The 10 plagues could have been considered attacks on specific gods. For instance, darkness challenged the sun god Ra in Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 and 23. The ten plagues were a judgment on all of the Egyptian gods in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, as well as Numbers chapter 33, verse 4, that were conceived in human imaginations. They were created by human hands and were no match for the Lord, the God of Israel. The question, who is like you, Lord, in verse 11 focuses on the great uh, attributes that sets God apart from other gods. The emphasis on God's holiness begins in Exodus chapter five, chapter 3, verse 5, and continues through the book of Revelations, chapter 15, verse 4. God is totally unlike any false god that has ever or could ever be imagined to exist. Because God is holy, he also commands his people to be holy. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 44 and 45, chapter 19, verse 2, and in the New Testament, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. 
Only by being holy in ways similar to God's character can his people be a blessing to the nations, as was pointed out in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 2 and 3. God is to be held in reverence for his praiseworthy deeds and for the wonders he has done. And so we see that the song begins with God's preeminence. And so we're really going to look at the song of, of, of Moses and Mary and, and, and how the song is laid out. Uh, it is talking about really praising God in song or praising God with music. And so we, from our quarterly topic, we're talking about celebrating God and we're really talking about worshiping God. How do we express God's worth in, in, in praise language and praise music and so we're going to look at various aspects of worshiping God or praising God in our study for this quarter as we celebrate who God is and what God has done. And so now we look at God's power as the song goes on in verses 12 and 13. And so let's read verse 12 and 13 together, which is also on our screen. You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. And so the phrase, your right hand of God, refers to God's great power to deliver his people. As the psalmist point out in Psalms number 17, verse 7, and Psalms 139, verse verse 10, which celebrates God's victory over the Egyptian on Israel's behalf in Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 through 30. And so we see in verse 13 that it says, talking about God's faithfulness because of his promise prompted him to redeem the people of Israel from Egypt, which is in Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. God had promised to deliver his people. He had even told Abraham that before his people would go into the land of Canaan, that they would be enslaved for over 400 years in Egypt. And so now God is fulfilling his promise, and he has actually delivered them out of Egypt, and he has delivered them across the Red Sea. And while they are on the banks there of the Red Sea, Marion and Moses composed this song, which is called, we see in Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 21. And it outlines God's preeminent, that there's no other God's little G-O-D that compares or is like God. It begins now where we've been talking about God's great power through his wonders and his mighty arm. And so we see now in verse 13 of, of today's lesson, that God's faithfulness to his promise was prompt, has prompted him to the redeem the people of Israel as he had promised. Israel's deliverance from Egypt is one prime physical example of redemption. God spoke to Moses of delivering Israel from Egypt in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. Our spiritual redemption mirrors this. We are God's people led out of sin and into new life, as Paul writes in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, 9 through 14. God was taking the Israelites to the promised land. Canaan was the place God chose as his holy dwelling in Genesis chapter 28, verse 16 through 22, as well as the psalmist write in Psalms number 78, verse 54. And so the tabernacle would travel through the wilderness with the people as a symbol of God's presence in Exodus chapter 29, verse 44 through 46. When the Israelites settled in the promised land, God would allow Solomon to build the temple in Jerusalem as a permanent reminder that God had chose to dwell with his people in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. And so our next uh, outline really talks about how the nations react to this awesome and mighty God of Israel that had delivered them from 430 years of enslavement in Egypt. 
that had brought them across the Red Sea on dry land, but had also caused the waters to drown the Pharaoh's army and all of his horsemen and chariots. And so we look at uh, verses 14 through 16 as we deal with the nation's fear. And let's read verses 14 and through 16 together. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread, terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone. Until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you brought pass by. And so in verse 14a of today's scripture, God has demonstrated his protection for his chosen people, Israel. But the other nations, when they hear of God's power and mighty act, they will tremble as pointed out in verse 14a. In verse 14b, the word anguish here used in this verse probably reflects the magnitude and the acuteness of the pain of the people of Philistia, which later became the Philistines. In verse 15a, Edom, which was a nation that was south and southeast of the Dead Sea, Edom's inhabitants traced their lineage back to Esau, who was Jacob's brother, right? Jacob and Esau from Genesis chapter 25, verse 30, and from Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Moab, which laid east of the Dead Sea, whose lineage traces back to Lot by his older daughter in Genesis chapter 19, verse 36 through 37. And so Lot was Abraham's nephew. And God had made some promises both to the descendants of Esau as well as the descendants of Lot. And so the Israelites were instructed by God not to provoke either the Moab nation or the, uh, Edomite, or the Edom nation because of the inheritance God had given those nations' forefathers, which was Lot and which was Esau, from Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 5 and verse 9. And so the Israelites even went around or went past Edom, for the Edomites refused to let the Israelites pass through their land in Numbers chapter 20, verse 21, and verse chapter 21, verse, 14, verse 4. This was evidence of the fear of the leaders who led those nations. The amazement and trembling that's mentioned in verse 14 uh, is of the rulers of these two nations are emphasized by the way they reacted. Their reactions to God's mighty works for Israel influenced both nations in their entirety. In other words, they chose not to uh, attack this nation because they understood how God had demonstrated his power over one of the most powerful nations that exists that, during that time, and that was the nation of Egypt and one of the most powerful uh, leaders, which was Pharaoh. And so we see in verse 15b uh, that uh, Jericho, which was a city located just on the other side uh, uh, of the river, uh, was located in Canaan and is a prime example of the consuming terror that the people felt. Jericho was located just on the other side of the river Jordan. Now, this would be 40 years later before they would be going across that river to enter into Jericho. And so 40 years after singing this song in Numbers chapter 14, verse 34, Joshua sent two spies uh, to the city of Jericho in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. There they found a, a, a Canaanite woman by the name of Rahab. And Rahab had chose to protect the people. And so a Canaanite woman named Rahab reported to the Israelite spies that came through Canaan that the nation of Canaan, the people of Canaan, was terrified of Israel. Now, Miriam in her song and Moses in his song had already prophesied that, that 
some 40 years before it ever occurred. One reason that Rahab gave was that they had heard about Israel crossing the Red Sea, which is the event that is being uh, sung about and praised about and giving God the glory and the honor in the Exodus chapter 15 passage of scripture that we're studying. And so we see that the reason she gave was that they were terrified because they had crossed the Red Sea. They had heard of how, how God had parted the Red Sea in Joshua chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, as well as chap uh, verse 24. Now we see in verse uh, 16, the phrase God arm, it celebrates the power of God in working on behalf of his chosen people in Exodus chapter 15, verse 12. Through the other, though the other nation would resist God, God, their effort would be as effective as if they were, as the phrase goes, as still as stone in, in verse 16 from 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 37. Until God had established his people in the promised land, and this land was the land that God had brought them to that he had promised he would bring them to as a song and outline in the song of Moses and Miriam in Exodus chapter 15, verse 13. And so now we see Marion lift up the promises that God made to Israel as we look at verse 17 through 19. And let's read verse 17 through 19 together. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of, mountain of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hand established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. While when Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the water of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry land. And so we see in verse uh, 17, that Moses spoke of God setting the people in the promised land as he refers to the mountain of uh, Zion. Mount Zion is where uh, the Jerusalem would be and also where the temple would be. And the psalmist writes about Mount Zion in, in Psalms number two, verse six, as well as Daniel talks about Lord planting them in on Mount Zion in Daniel's chapter, Daniel chapter nine, verse 16. Now, the word sanctuary here is refers to the future temple, uh, which would be built on Mount Zion in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 2 through 7, where Solomon would establish uh, building the temple after David, his father, had longed to do that. But this would be some years later after they have, you know, entered into the promised land and after they have been ruled by judges. And finally, they have been ruled by kings, and David would be the second king to rule the nation. And his desire was to build a, a permanent dwelling place for the Lord. But because David was a man, hands were man, of blood, God would have not allowed David to build the temple. But he did say David's son would have built the temple, and that was Solomon. And so we see in verse 18 here, where it says that the Lord reigns forever and ever, uh, that people had challenged the Lord's reign by challenging his chosen leader, Moses, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 6 through 9. As a result of them challenging God's reign, some were swallowed by the earth there in the wilderness. Others were consumed with fire, and there were more than 14,700 that died in the wilderness because of a plague. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 32, verse 35, and verse 49. In another incident, many died after being bitten by serpents because they, they, they did not want to listen to Moses. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 8 and 9, as well as John writes in John chapter 3, verse 14. And so now we see in verse 19 of today's study is that Pharaoh lost more than uh, 600 of his best chariots, which were used as war vehicles, uh, because of his willingness or his unwillingness to obey God and to let God's people go. 
We see that in Exodus chapter 14, verse 7, as well as verse 28. So also in verse 19, it describes a contrast here in the outcomes of the Egyptians and the Israelites. Both people or both nations experienced the depths of the sea. The Israelites, however, walked through the sea on dry ground. But when Pharaoh's horses, as well as his chariots and his horsemen, uh, went into the sea, God, through a mighty hand, brought the waters of the sea back over them. And so the Israelites were drowned there in the Red Sea. As when and the east and the uh, I'm sorry the Egyptians were drowned there in the Red Sea, and the Israelites crossed the sea, uh, crossed the Red Sea, uh, the depths of the Red Sea on dry land, and so now we look at the second part of uh, chapter uh, of the Song of Moses and Miriam, which is in uh, Exodus chapter 15 verses 20 and 21. So let's read verse 20 together. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Now, both Miriam, Aaron, and Moses are all designated as prophets in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, as well as Deuteronomy chapter 14, chapter 34, verse 10, and in Micah chapter 6, verse 4. But the Hebrew word here, the Hebrew word here that is translated prophet in verse 20 has a feminine ending. So therefore, the word prophetess would be appropriate when referring to Miriam, Miriam, Moses' sister. She is one of several women in the Bible who are designated as prophetess. In Judges chapter 4, we know about Deborah was known as a prophet. In 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 14, we studied about Holder as being a prophet. In Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 14, there was a lady by the name of Noadiah. She was also a prophet. And also in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 3, Isaiah's wife was designated or called the prophetess. Also, we saw in Luke's study, chapter 2, verse 36, there was an old lady there that was waiting for the consolation of God or the consolation of Israel. And her name was Anna, and she was also a prophetess. And so the function of a prophet or a prophetess was one who gives voice to the command of God from Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. The prophet's role was to speak what thus said the Lord. And so now Marion and all the women use their timbrels, which is nothing but a small drum, and the dance, their rhythmic, rhythmic dance capability to provide the accompaniment uh, to the song of Moses. And this is a celebration of God's victory over the nation of Egypt and Pharaoh and his army on behalf of his chosen people, uh, the nation of Israel or the Israelites. And that's what we ought to do. When God does something wonderful for us, we ought to celebrate God. We ought to praise him in dance. We ought to praise him in song. We ought to praise him in suffering, in, in serving. And this really is what this lesson for the fall of 2021, the whole quarterly topic is talking about. How does God people celebrate him? And so we're going to look at various aspects of celebrating God. And so the first celebration we see here is after they've been delivered from Egypt and brought across the Red Sea by God's mighty hand, Miriam and the women lift up the song from God, and they sing God's praises. And how do you praise God? You praise God for who he is and what he has done. And so we see here in our last uh, verse, uh, last verse, verse 21, how God is lifted up by his people in verse 21, the exaltation of God. Let's read verse 21 together. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The words that Miriam and the women sang 
are very similar to how the song began in Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. Their words are the final reminder of how Pharaoh and his entire army was no match for the mighty God of Israel. And so when God is no, there is no, your arms, our arms are too short to box with God. Pharaoh, through his disobedience and through his stubbornness, who also thought he was a little G-O-D God, he refused to obey God and to let God's people go. And as a result of that, he had to, he and his entire army had to suffer the consequence. God had to take them through 10 plagues before he finally convinced them through the 10th plague, which was the death of the firstborn child or the firstborn son of in every household that was not protected by the blood over the doorpost and the limb. Then Pharaoh decided to send them out. Having a change in heart after they lost, after they left, he decided to send his army out to return them. And ultimately, they ended up being destroyed by the drowning in the Red Sea. And so let's look at our context as we close for our lesson, as we conclude for our lesson today. And our lesson context is on the screen, or our conclusion is on the screen. And it's really about in context. Let's just read that together. Our songs always come with context. For instances, the story behind Amazon, Amazing Grace, adds depth to the lyrics of the song itself. The long history in England, and especially in North America, has shaped how we hear or sing it today. The situation in which we have heard it played or sung changed how we process the lyrics. Different arrangements let us hear the song afresh. Like the song that Moses, Miriam, and the people sang, our songs come from specific situations, whether they be of deliverance, of healing, of crossing from death into life. When we sing, with whom we sing, these things matter. Therefore, let us do as the psalmist challenge us and sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. What song will you sing? as a result of God's character and the work in your life, in your family, in your church, and in your community. Our thought for to remember for today's study is that God always wins. And Peter coined, uh, Peter wrote these words in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, that we ought to humble ourselves, therefore unto God's mighty hand that he may lift us up or lift you up in due time. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Let us close with prayer. Father heaven, we thank you for your mighty works and your wonders. We thank you, Father, how you reveal yourself throughout the Bible. And so we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for all these examples that we see in the Bible. The Bible says that these examples, uh, these Old Testament examples were written for our learning. Help us learn from days gone by, Father, just how you have been faithful to your word. You promised Abraham that you would deliver his people out of bondage into the promised land. You promised us through your son, Jesus, that he would be a savior of the world that he would save his people from their sins. And he died on the cross, Father, so that we too can be forgiven of our sins. And he promised one day that he will come back and he will deliver us to the ultimate promised land, the place of eternal rest. We thank you for Jesus and in his precious name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining today for our study. I pray God will continue to bless and keep you safe.